All right, so we have our search filter in place. Now let's see how we can filter these results by user. Now in the previous video, we created this scope filter. And within that, we only checked if there is a search parameter. Now we want to have another parameter and we can call it whatever we want, but I would like to call it user ID. Basically, when I click on this name, which is the name of the user, I want to have a parameter here that says user ID and whatever the ID of this user is. So that means we need to attach a function to this username in our card component. So let's go there and start there. In our card view component, I'm going to create a function and call it select user. In this function, I will take an ID and we want to do the same thing as we did in our home component. So in here, we submitted that search request to the same route with the payload. So we want to do the same thing here and we want to use router from inertia view three and submit this through a get request to our home route. So let's just say route home. And then as a second argument, we have our payload. So again, we can call it whatever we want, but I want to call it user ID. And the value for that is going to be our ID parameter. Now let's attach this to our button, which shows the user. So let's go down right here. We have a button and we want to use the at click event listener and use select user. We know we have access to the listing and each listing has the user object within it. So we can say listing user ID. And now let's go back to our website and click on the username. We get user ID is two. If I click on this other one, we get user ID one. So we are able to add another parameter to our URL and we already know how to handle URL parameters. So in our listing model inside the scope filter, we checked for a search parameter or key. We can do the same thing for other parameters. So I can just have another if statement and then say, if we had a user underscore ID in our parameters or filters, then do something. But again, we don't want to assume that there is always a user ID. So we say, if there isn't, then return false. Now we want to use the same query again. So that means our listings and return listings where the user ID is this user ID. So again, let's use the where function. And this time we want to look under our user ID. So this is the name of the column in our listings table in our database. And we want to say, return the listings where the user ID is one or two or three or whatever. So we know our request would have a parameter with this user ID. So like here, it would be one, two or whatever number. Now you notice this time we are not saying like user ID because this time we actually want the exact number. All right, so now we have this if statement, but we have to go back to our listing controller and pass that to our filters function. So we already have search in an array. We can also add user ID like this, and this will be passed down to this scope filter, to this if statement, and we will have the query if it exists. Now let's see if this works. So I'm going to first clear everything. And at the moment we have 20 results. If I click on this name, then we have nine results. So this user have nine listings. And if we go to page two, we of course keep that user ID in the URL parameters. And that is because of the function with query string that we used down here. So this is also working and it was quite simple. The problem comes in when we have more than one filter because at the moment it's just one, right? Let's say I want to search for a phrase only in the listings of this user, not in the other one. So at the moment I have nine, right? Let's search for that QUI. You notice we go back to 20 and our parameter is completely changed. So we don't have our user ID anymore. And the same goes the other way around. So we have a search right now. If I click on these names, then it is replaced with that new parameter. So basically what we need to do, tell our inertia and Vue.js to keep the parameters in the URL or at least the ones we want. So we know these problems are happening in our card component and home component. So the search method and the select user method, because these are the ones that are making a request to the same page and replacing the URL parameters with the new parameters. So it would make sense to include whatever parameters we have in the URL in these payloads. 
Now let's see how we can grab those parameters in our front end. So this is not about Laravel, it's just about Inertia and Vue.js. Now let's go back to our home component or the cart, doesn't matter. And I just want to show you first how to grab these parameters. If I log the route function into the console, which is part of that Ziggy package that we are using in our functions, right? And take a look at it. And we have an object here, but what we are interested in is this params property. So if we open it, which is an object, we have our user ID set to two. If we say route.params like this and reload, then we get the URL parameters in an object. And this is exactly what we want. So we want to say, include the URL parameters when we submit this new parameter with this new name. So instead of this console.log, I'm going to create a params variable and I will set this to route.params. Now down here, we have a search. Let's also include user ID, which we will set it to params.userID. So for now, we are doing this only on the search function. Let's test this out. I'm going to close this and clear everything, reload. If I select a user, we have number two. And if I search something, for example, UI, then we will keep that user ID. And also we have a new search parameter. So let me do this again. I will select this user. So we have 11 results and then I will search for this phrase. Then we have only four results. Now this is only one way because we didn't apply it in the user function. So if I search something, for example, for example, this tempore text, and if I select a user, then again, it is replaced. So we want to repeat this process in our card component for the select user function. Let me just copy this params and go to the card component and paste it up here. Then we want to add the search key here and set that to params.search. So we are just saying if there is a search, grab it from the parameters. If there isn't, then don't. Now this will not entirely solve our problem. Let's do it again. If I search for this tempore, we get 10 results and we have both users. If I select this one, Dallas, we get five results, but you notice we have the other user in here. So this is the problem that I mentioned in the previous video and I left it there on purpose. So the problem is in our listing model and these where statements. And let's end this statement here. I just want to show you what's going on and comment this out. So we only have one where statement in our search filters, right? And of course, one where statement for the user ID. And again, let's do this. So I'm going to search for that tempore. And you notice it only returns two results because now we are only searching in the title. And if I select a user, then it will see only that user. I can also go the other way around. So let's say this Dallas again. So we have nine results and I can go to page two. Everything belongs to Dallas and I can say search for tempore. Then we get that one result. So it does work correctly when we have only one. So we know the problem is this or where. And this is because when we chain where's like this, we are essentially canceling out this other query. So the proper way to have multiple where statements is to wrap them with a callback function or a closure. So I'm going to cut this whole thing and start with the query again. So we are inside the search filters. We want to use the where function again, but this time we don't want to just pass down our query. We want to pass a function and within that we will have our query and I'm calling this one Q. Then as the body of this function, we will paste our where statement, then use this Q up here. Then I can end this statement. So the errors are gone. And basically we are saying first query these two columns and then return it as one statement. Now let's do this again. Let's search for this phrase again. We get 10 results, of course, because now we are including the description. We can go to page two and we can see both users and I'm gonna select this one. And you can see this is working properly because we can only see that user and the listings that have this phrase within that. And of course, everything works the same way. So we can select this user, for example, and search for this phrase. Then we have only five results that belong to that user alone. And that is all we have to do to include a second filter. And that is by the user who created the listings. In the next video, we will add another one and that would be the tags.